Next up, we have Anna Coburn. She's a Western Colorado University graduate of the Master of Environmental Management program. She's a range technician for the United States Forest Service and has previously worked as a podcast producer and reporter for the Gunnison Country Times. She hosted and produced the podcast series Wildish, published by High Country News. It explores the controversial and complicated world of wild horses and burrows roaming the Western United States. And I told her when she walked in tonight that I heard her on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me recently when I was driving my car down the road. <laughs> Welcome, Anna. Hi. Thank you very much for having me. I'm honored to be here. I'm, I was honored to um, be asked to be here. And I see a lot of familiar faces here tonight. So this is going to make it um, all the much harder for me. Um, but. I, I'm Anna Coburn, like she said, and you may recognize my name from the Gunnison Country Times. You may also recognize me from uh, The Last Son of a Gun as the lady who sang Naked in a Box. Um, that was me. Uh, if you don't know me, it's so nice to meet you. I look forward to any conversation afterward. <laughs> Um, but I'm here tonight to talk to you about what it means to be a curator of stories. I'm here on this stage right now because through my professional projects, I've learned the value of collecting stories of others and creating something that's honest and authentic and as informative as it can be. And I'm going to try to do all that in 10 minutes. But what I want you to maybe walk away with tonight is considering the idea that every single person is a storyteller. And so here I go, here's my story. Also, I promise that these are relevant um, to what's about to happen tonight. So my story is five years ago, I came to Western to join the Master of Environmental Management program. I'm sorry, am I out of the camera? <laughs> Uh, five years ago, I came to uh, Western for the Master of Environmental Management program, the MEM, and I stumbled upon the subject of wild horses and burrows roaming the United States. Now, if you don't know anything about this issue, it's juicy. All right, so I'll, I'll sum it up for you really quick. So basically, we have these animals that are protected by law. Um, as American history symbols, mascots of a pioneering Wild West spirit. And we have a lot of them competing with native wildlife on our public lands. So to keep their numbers in check, we as the Bureau of Land Management, not we, but the Bureau of Land Management gathers them up and puts them in holding facilities at a great expense, uh, taxpayer dollars. And this is not a sustainable solution. It is not a long-term solution, and it's a head-scratcher. People are really, really, really passionate about this issue. We have a whole spectrum, and on one side, you have people that believe that those horses and burrows have every right to be out there. And then on the other side, you have people that believe they should disappear from the land entirely. And you have the Bureau of Land Management getting tomatoes thrown at them from every single angle. And I found this fascinating. The controversy just sucked me right in. And I wanted to do my master's project on this. I wanted to do a podcast series on this. And five years ago, I would just tell people it was a project for radio. Um, in 2023, I bet all of you have a podcast. So the world has changed pretty rapidly. But I traveled all over the United States and collected these interviews of people whose lives revolve around wild horses and burrows, whether it's their job um, with the Bureau of Land Management, whether they've adopted a Mustang or are training donkeys to be adopted. And I went in with this huge curiosity, this hunger, because in the back of my mind, which actually probably made me a bad journalist, but it worked for me. In the back of my mind, I wanted someone to help me make up my mind because I wanted to be a good environmental steward. I wanted to be a good ancestor. I was in this environmental management program, but I'm also a horse girl. I grew up with horses. I have a horse tattoo. I'm obsessed with horses. So I wanted someone to tell me what to think 
um, who was right, who was wrong, what the solutions were. Or I figured if I gathered all these perspectives, then I would be some sort of expert and be this hero and be like, this is what you do. And so you're welcome. <laughs> but what I found was through these conversations, I didn't walk away with concrete solutions. I walked away with connections. And I laughed with people. I cried with people. They fed me because I was a poor grad student. Uh, they gave me gifts. And it was a wonderful and surprising experience. And so I came home with this collection of interviews and sat down ready to produce this podcast. And I became less of an investigator on what the solutions should be and more of a story curator. And I'll explain more about that in a minute. But it was just a good story by itself. It, it kind of led its own way. It came to life. But what is a good story anyway? And I know we've been sitting here for a long time. I wanted to ask the audience to just shout out what words do you think of when you think of a good story? What describes a good story? Say that again. Compelling, yes. Anybody else? Funny, yeah, I agree. <laughs> what else? Passion, I love that. Drama, what was the other one? Engaging, thanks, Lauren. Fear? I thought you said beer at first. <laughs> like, yeah, cheers, what's up? <laughs> I agree with all of this. I mean, it, it's a case-by-case -case basis, right? And what made this story such a good story was it forced you to introspect on yourself, on the, reflect on the way that you thought about American history, about colonization, about indigenous history, about bureaucracy, sustainability. But most blatantly to me, it was about our relationship with the word wild. What makes a wild horse wild? What makes these wild lands wild? What are humans wild? So I named the podcast Wildish. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I thought it was pretty clever. Um, <laughs> and now I've lost my place, um, tooting my own horn. Um, I, like I said, it, it began to tell itself. It came to life through those connections and those conversations that I had with people. And by curating it, it was its own art piece already. And all I had to do with the podcast was frame it a little and shed some light on it for a wider audience who may not know anything about this issue to understand it for something honest and authentic and informative and funny. And there was beer involved um, in some of these conversations. And it had some success. I was really happy with it. And um, High Country News, they have an office out of Western Colorado University here. Uh, they published Wildish um, a few months after I graduated. Um, I'm just glad I graduated. <laughs> but um, it's still up on any platform um, that you listen to podcasts. And But with Wildish, <laughs> it not only informed the projects I had done since, um, but it seeped into my daily life in framing things as everyone is a storyteller. It gave some grace to people. Um, it's so easy to be burned out on humans. I don't know if you guys can relate to that. Um, and so when I am in the grocery store or just walking through daily life and remember that everyone has a unique journey and a unique perspective, on what led them there to be in this camp or that camp, then there's a curiosity that flips back on instead of dismissiveness, instead of just writing people off. So when you walk out this door tonight, I want you to consider a couple of things. That everyone is a storyteller. It might surprise you. It might be wonderful if you just try it a little bit. Because I think in situations like the wild horse and burrow conundrum, it can be a really useful tool in just going a little bit forward to find literally any solution. Also, spoiler alert, I never made up my mind about what the right solution is. Um, and then a second thing I want you to consider 
is your relationship to the word wild and what it means to you and what that relative definition is. So with that, I'm under 10 minutes. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for being here and I look forward to Coop's talk.